Hey tribe, I uh, wanted to take a moment today to share a few words about shame. Um, this is an epidemic in our culture, in our community, um, and it's something that um, we all experience. So I wanted to take a, a moment today to just talk a bit about that. Um, it, for me, my, my personal relationship with shame is, uh, it runs very deep. Um, I've struggled my whole life with shame and um, you know, th throughout the course of my life developed a whole bunch of different uh, mechanisms to prevent me from having to experience shame, one of them being perfectionism, um, others being fitness and nutrition, and developing, you know, a perfect body image so um, I could find acceptance and love for myself, but uh, that pursuit ended up taking me down a further road of um, getting further and further away from my truth and, and who I am. and. Um, I recently just returned from a seven month trip overseas and uh, really connected to me, to myself, uh, let go of all of this stuff, this peripheral stuff around me, around perfectionism and fitness and nutrition and just kind of really connected with myself at, uh, to the core of my being and um, some really cool things were discovered and uh, that's why I started this group. I want to uh, be able to share some of these things that I've been working on, um, help people through their path. Um, towards healing from shame and um, yeah, so today will be kind of just like a teaching, uh, a, a few words that I can offer you to help you understand. So <clears throat> shame is, well first off, everybody has shame. Um, it's ingrained in our DNA, it's ingrained in our biology, it's hardwired into us um, from as far back as when we were living in tribes and um, tribe members would use shame to keep other tribe members in line and um, it became a thing about social conformity and now still to this day we use shame to control each other's behaviors um, things that we don't want to see other people do we shame them for it um, the dominator society the governments all of them they, they use shame as a tactic to keep us all in line um, one of the biggest things that i see in the gay community um, that we use to exacerbate our shame is going to be comparison. Um, we see something in our environment, we see someone in envir an environment and we're constantly measuring ourselves up to them because it's like, you know, when you think about shame, we, we experience a shame response and then we compare ourselves to other people in the tribe to make sure we, we, we try and alleviate our shame response. So we do that with, with comparison to try and make ourselves feel better than others. But what it can end up doing is it can make us feel inferior to others as well. So comparison is a very tricky um, thing, but it's something that we want to understand. In the culture and the psychology around shame, there's a lot of talk about toxic shame. And I'm not a big fan of that terminology because I believe shame, shame does serve a purpose for us. Um, it it kind of teaches us the polarities of moving away from self-animosity and into self-love, right? It's, it's part of the continuum. We need it. If we, if we didn't have shame, we wouldn't understand acceptance of self. So it's very important. Um, but what the term toxic shame does is it makes us reject. Uh, shame and it makes us keep it in the dark and keep it unconscious. So what I like to, to, to frame um, toxic shame as is unconscious shame. So we all have shame, but what ends, what ends up happening is when we start to do this healing work, our shame becomes conscious. We start, we start to be able to understand how, how shame and our shame wounds influence how we work and how we uh, participate in the world around us. And, and through that understanding is how we heal it. But the thing about, about shame that I want you guys to understand is that it's, it doesn't dissolve. You don't, we, don't, um, we don't remove it from our lives. You can't remove a human emotion from your life. It doesn't work that way. But what we do is we create distance. We create space between ourselves and our shame and we're able to kind of step back with objectivity and look at it and be like, okay, this is how shame is playing out in my life. And these are the things that I need to maybe avoid or these are the things that I maybe even need to allow, right? When, when, we, um, when we experience shame, we don't want to connect with others in the wholeness of our being because we don't, we don't want to feel seen because that might lead to rejection. So what I mean by allow is if we can allow ourselves to show up in, in our truth and, in, in, and, and be vulnerable, we're going to establish b these beautiful connections and through connections how we, we heal shame, right? Um, because 
we start to um, let go of identifying with shame um, when we connect with other people because we realize that we're all um, we're all the same, right? We're all working through these things together and when we feel isolated and alone in, in our shame is when it exacerbates and it becomes really, really problematic. So when we can learn to connect with others through our shame, it, it, it again, it creates that space, it creates that distance uh, from the shame and we stop um, acting from, from shameful places inside of ourselves and we start to connect to places of, of acceptance and love and self-worth and that's really what um, I want this brotherhood to be about is it's an opportunity for us to come into the group and for us to share aspects of ourselves that we're not used to sharing with other people. So there's going to be a lot of questions I'm going to be asking, posing to the group, and, and, and I'm always a big proponent of share at your comfort level. Wherever you're at on your journey, honor your pace, right? So don't ever overshare if it doesn't feel right for you just to fit into the group because then we're falling back into shame again. We're, we're falling back into conformity to try and fit in. So this group is, is it's really about belonging, right? It's about showing up in who you are exactly and where you're at in your journey and knowing that we as a brotherhood are going to honor that and we're going to respect where you are at in your journey. So um, I just would ask that everybody, you know, that's, that's in the group to try, try your best to take small risks every day that feels safe for you to be able to show up in who you are because we all want that. If, if, you, if you look in the group, the number one used word in the group is connection, right? Everybody's looking for connection and the opposite to that word is going to be loneliness. We're all experiencing loneliness because we all desire connection. So when we put ourselves out there and we start to show up in the truth of who we are, other people feel like they can relate to us, right? And through that relatability is, is how we develop that connection, right? And then through our connection, we work through the shame that we're experiencing. So it's all kind of connected, right? So, um, but it takes that first little bit of a leap of faith to be able to put yourself out there and allow people to see you for who you are, right? Take off the mask. We all have many, many masks that we wear, right? So just take even one off and stop in, in, interacting with that one mask and let yourself be seen for... Um, what you might think is weaknesses is other people are going to look at and, and, and say, wow, this person's strong for showing up in, in the truth of who they are. So anyways, I, that's all I really wanted to share with you guys today about shame. But uh, if you have any questions, please post them below and I would be uh, grateful to answer or even other people in the group. There's so much knowledge in this group. Um, so many people that bring so much. So um, this isn't about me leading the group. This is about me holding a space for other people to come in as well and lead the group too. So it's really cool. Um, that's what a brotherhood is all about. So thank you for being a part of this. I love you all. Take care.